All right, so today we're talking about factory functions and the prototype object and why we need the prototype object. What benefit is there to us by having the prototype object? All right, so I have here a basic factory function. This function right here is a factory function and it's called a factory function because it builds things. Down here at the bottom, I'm creating three variables, Steve, Matthias, and Liv. And these three objects are all going to be of type person. So I'm saying new person, new person, new person. So I'm calling function, but I'm using the new keyword to do it. When you use the new keyword, it changes what the function returns. It no longer returns just whatever I put down here at the bottom. You know, normally in a function, you write return, you put a value, or if you don't put return, the function's going to return undefined. I have no return keyword here, but this function is not going to return undefined. It's going to return an object of type person. So inside of here, when I use the keyword this, I'm talking about the object that is being created by my constructor. This factory function is my constructor function. It is building an object and I'm giving it a couple of properties, name and speak. So this.name is whatever I pass in. This.speak is another property on our person object. It's going to be a function. Okay, so fair enough. I've got Steve, new person, I'm giving it a name, and then I can call the speak method. So if I were to run this code now, so we'll use node, we'll run main.js. There we go. So it builds these three people, Steve, Matthias, Liv, and it calls the speak function on each one of them. And it doesn't look like there's any problem. Everything works. There's no problems with any of the code. The issue that we have here is if we actually start to look at what are these objects? So if I say console.log Steve, and I write out the other two as well. So Matthias, there we go. We run this again. All right, so there's our three console logs. Here's our three person objects. So it's an object of type person. And there's the name property, and here's the speak property. This speaks to, no pun intended, the problem that we have with doing this. I'm adding a property that is a method. I'm putting the exact same method into every single one of the objects. The name property, you know, I want to have that in each because the value of each is going to be different. The speak property is the exact same a function again and again and again and again. So if we're using the same function again and again, and I create a thousand one of these person objects, then my problem is that I've created a thousand copies of this function where I only need one. And this is why we have the prototype object. So if I comment this part out right here, Try that again. There we go. So I comment out, I don't have the speak method. What we're going to do is we're going to say, hey, you know what? The person object, which is this function, every function that you ever write in JavaScript, every single function has a prototype object. This is built in. This is the place where we want to put things that are going to be duplicated. So person.prototype.speak. That's where we're going to put this function. And we pass in the words. And inside of here, console.log, words. And if you did need to refer to this at some point in here, you can do that. The keyword this inside of here understands, OK, was it Steve? Was it Matthias? Was it Liv? Which one of these person objects called the function? So this understands the context of where this is coming from. All right, so I've just moved it from inside the function to on the prototype of this function. Now the function is shared. So let's clear this. Oh, actually, we'll just run it again. We got lots of room here. There we go. Now I've got these three lines. They're still working. Those calls to that speak function still function perfectly fine but I'm using a lot less memory in each one of the person objects. So my factory functions, 
because of the prototype, are now much smaller. I've got a lot less code inside of them, and when I create these person objects, I'm not duplicating the effort. All right, so that's the concept. Um, now, if you want to write this, this is with standard JavaScript that works going way, 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 way back to the beginning. If you want to write it with the class syntax, we can do the exact same thing. Let's create another one. We'll say class human and constructor is our keyword. This basically becomes our constructor function. So inside of here, we do this little piece. We say, okay, we're passing in a name and we're creating a name property. If I did this, if I said this.speak, I'm doing the exact same thing that I did before. I'm causing the same problem. I'm putting it here inside the object. I don't want to do that. I want it on the prototype. So with the class syntax, we do this. We say, oh, okay, speak is going to be a function. Just like this. By writing it this way, I'm actually putting it on the prototype. And inside of here, we just take our one line of code, put it here, and then we pass in words like this. And we'll just repeat what we did right here. So I'll comment that out, comment this out down here at the bottom. We'll do the exact same thing, but we'll use human instead of person. I should have selected and typed them all at the same time, but that's okay. We're going to be able to do that. Run it again. So it works. And then if we were to do this part again, and we take a look, sure enough, we have our three humans with nothing inside of here. It's actually on the prototype object. So here is the class version of a constructor function. I'll temporarily close that. There we go. So here we have the constructor function with the prototype or the class syntax creating the exact same thing. And this is why you should love prototypes is because it allows you to create code that's much more efficient, that uses a lot less memory. All right, so if you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments. If you look in the description, you'll find a link to the code gist with all of this code. And as always, thanks for watching.